Bank one sensor one, bank one sensor two, bank two sensor one, bank two sensor two, upstream, downstream. What in the world does all this stuff mean and where exactly is the oxygen sensor at that you're supposed to be looking at or replacing? Well, in this video guys, I hope to break that down for you. Let's go ahead and get into it. What's up folks, this is Keith and you're watching Barbara's Auto Help. If you're watching this video, you're probably familiar with these acronyms right here. These acronyms can be found at the end of diagnostic trouble codes related to oxygen sensor problems. And they basically tell you where the oxygen sensor is located at. This is bank one sensor one, bank one sensor two, bank two sensor one, bank two sensor two. And the banks basically tell you what side of the engine you can find the oxygen sensor on. And then the sensor, sensor one or sensor two, lets you know whether or not the oxygen sensor is upstream or downstream. And we'll get into that later on. But for now, let's talk about banks. Now, what are we talking about when we use the word bank? I guess the best way I could describe a bank to you is a row of cylinders that share a common cylinder head. On this four cylinder right here that you see before me, it has one bank. It has a row of cylinders that has one common cylinder head. It shares a common intake and a common exhaust. Now, the same can be said for most inline engines. Inline three cylinders, inline four cylinders, inline six cylinders, whatever you got there. If you have a row of cylinders that shares a common head and only one row of cylinders in the engine, it's going to be one bank and the bank is going to be called bank number one. Now, that all changes when you have a V-type engine. This is a V6 before me here, and this information will apply to V8s and V10s as well. When you got a V-type engine, you have two rows of cylinders, one on each side of the engine, and one of them is going to be bank one, and one of them is going to be bank two. And this is where it gets a little tricky. You got to find out which one is bank number one. Bank number one is always going to have cylinder number one on it. And in this vehicle, cylinder number one is located on the passenger side. So this row of cylinders on this vehicle is going to be bank number one. And bank number two is going to be on the opposite side naturally. Now, how do I know that cylinder number one on this side of the engine? Well, typically for most vehicles, you can tell which one is cylinder number one just by noticing which cylinder head is pushed more forward to the accessory drive than the other cylinder head. Typically, cylinder number one will be at the front of the cylinder head that is closest to the accessory drive. Kind of hard to see on this particular vehicle, but that valve cover right there is pushed forward just a little bit further than that valve cover just underneath that spring there. All right, here's another example for you, and perhaps this is actually a better example. These are two examples of a Ford engine. This is a Ford V6. This is a Ford, a Ford V8. And you can see, uh, you got your cylinders laid out here, but you'll notice that this row of cylinders is pushed more forward than the other row. Same thing with the V8. That row of cylinders right there is pushed more forward than the other row. The row of cylinders that's pushed more forward on an engine is gonna have cylinder number one at the front of it. So cylinder number one on this Ford V6 right here is that one right there. And cylinder number one on the Ford V8 engine right there is right there. This would be bank one, that would be bank one, and obviously the other bank would be bank two. Now not every engine out there, whether it be another make, will be laid out like this. You got to find out which row of cylinders is pushed more forward than the other, and that will have cylinder number one on it, and that row of cylinders will be bank one. And of course, just to make things clear on this acronym here, if you were to be talking about bank two, this would be a two instead of a one. And the same thing with the sensor here. If you're talking about sensor number two, this would be a two instead of a one. So these numbers right here change in relation to the position of the oxygen sensor you're looking at there. Now let's talk about this part of the acronym, the sensor. What sensor you're talking about? Is it sensor one or is it sensor two, upstream or downstream? When we say stream, what are we talking about? We're talking about exhaust flow. Now, as you know, the combustion process happens inside the engine and then the waste product of that combustion process comes out through the exhaust manifold. In this case, this is a header here, but the exhaust goes and flows through the exhaust system out the tailpipe. The further up to the engine you get, the further upstream you get, the further to the tailpipe you get, the further downstream you get. Now what you're looking at right here is a catalytic converter and you can see you have an O2 sensor right in the side of the catalytic converter right here and then you can also see a position here where an O2 sensor would have been placed. 
This part of the catalytic converter is the flange that mounts up to the cylinder head, and the cylinder head uh, has the exhaust manifold built into it for this particular catalytic converter. So this would be upstream, down there would be downstream. This would be your upstream O2 sensor or sensor one O2 sensor, and this would be your sensor two O2 sensor or downstream O2 sensor. Your Sensor one is always gonna be in the flow of exhaust gas before the catalytic converter. The sensor two is always gonna be either in the catalytic converter, just past the first part of the catalytic converter, or just after the catalytic converter. So upstream O2 sensor or sensor one, downstream O2 sensor, sensor two. Okay, let's try to make sense of this and put all this together. All right, so on this inline four cylinder right here, we know that we're gonna have a bank one sensor one and a bank one sensor two oxygen sensor. And let's locate those real quick. Uh, the bank one sensor one O2 sensor is gonna be right there. And the reason that's the bank one sensor one oxygen sensor, because there's one bank, so bank one. Sensor one, because it's upstream. The catalytic converter is right there. We know the exhaust flow goes that way. So that's gonna be bank one sensor one. And just after the catalytic converter, further down on the uh, exhaust pipe, you'll have bank one sensor two. And this concept is applicable to most vehicles equipped with the inline engine, whether it be a three cylinder, four cylinder, six cylinder, or what have you. Okay, on this V6 here that has two banks, we know that cylinder number one is on this bank on the passenger side. So this row of cylinders would be bank one and then that rule would be bank two. So we need to find out where bank one sensor one oxygen sensor is. And that's gonna be the oxygen sensor right down there on the exhaust manifold or just after the exhaust manifold on bank one. And then the bank one sensor two oxygen sensor is gonna be the oxygen sensor just after the catalytic converter on bank one. Bank two sensor one, of course, is gonna be on the opposite side of the engine on bank two before the catalytic converter after the exhaust manifold. And then bank two sensor two is gonna be after the catalytic converter on bank two. And this same general idea, of course, applies to V8s and V10s. Now, remember that rule I mentioned earlier about an inline engine only having one bank? Well, there's an exception to everything, and there is an exception to this. Let's talk about it. What I have here is a crude drawing of an inline six cylinder. And you can see that this inline six cylinder has a common head but there's two banks, bank one and bank two. And the difference here is this has two different exhaust manifolds. It's got an exhaust manifold on the front three cylinders and one on the back three cylinders. The front three cylinders is gonna be known as bank one because it has cylinder number one. The back three cylinders is gonna be known as bank two because cylinder number one is not located back there. So this is kind of a monkey wrench in this whole thing here, but uh, there are engines out there like this and uh, they are split in this manner here. So your O2 sensor locations are gonna change based on that. So you may have an O2 sensor located right here before the catalytic converter on the bank one exhaust manifold. And that would be bank one O2 sensor. And then there may be one before the catalytic converter right here on bank two and that would be the bank two oxygen sensor. And of course, both of those would be sensor one, respectively. Now, there may be a common catalytic converter just aft of those exhaust manifolds, and then there would be an O2 sensor just after the catalytic converter, and then that would be called bank one sensor two. Even though you have both bank one and two going into it, it's gonna take the name bank one because there's only one back there. And you also may have catalytic converters on this that are not shared and then an O2 sensor just aft of each catalytic converter and in that case it would go back to bank one sensor two and then bank two sensor two. Well folks I certainly hope that this information was helpful to you. If you have any questions please comment down below. I'll be happy to get to you if I can get to you. Also guys this in my experience will apply to most of the vehicles out there today. Uh, there are exceptions to everything I just told you and of course do your own research but in my experience, this fits most vehicles out there. So guys, please read the entire description down below this video before you apply any of this knowledge. There may be some things I need to clarify. That's where I do that. Also, please read the disclaimer at the very end of it. And please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, guys.